Welcome to our first ever Loot Jam from Foam Sword Games. Uh, this is for Nights and Bikes. Uh, we're running our Kickstarter at the moment. And we've asked all our Kickstarter backers to join in and have a think about what kind of loot uh, they would like to be discovering in the game. And not, not the kind of loot that you'd normally get in your standard RPG, but uh, the kind of things that kids would really like to collect. So everyone got involved and, and came up with some thoughts. So I am going to take you through the process of picking one that I really liked. There's me, Rex. And uh, figuring out how to draw it in the game using the style that we are going for. There I am. Hey. Right, so let's get started. If we move over to the Kickstarter, uh, you can see we've got, I think we've got like uh, several hundred comments um, of amazing ideas, like really, really nice ideas for uh, what kind of loot um, our backers would be interested in, in getting into the game. Um, and there's some really smart ideas. I mean, a lot of things that are very evocative. And the one that I'm going to be looking at today is, uh, I love this one from Chris Stocks, um, who is talking about the little plastic bread uh, clips that hold a loaf of bread together. And I'd completely forgotten about these. There's one, see? Even my mouse pointer is excited. Um, I think they're, they're quite universal. Uh, Moo has also told me that they're something that he remembers from his childhood in America. So... You know, they, they've got some universal appeal as well. Um, see how it's kind of interesting seeing how other artists have actually taken these and painted their own designs on. Um, but today we're just going to be painting the thing itself. Um, so move over to this document, which has a whole bunch of the, the loot uh, already in it. You might have seen some of these in our debut trailer. Uh, mouse skulls and owl pellets and all kinds of things that kids might like to uh, hoard and store away. So we'll bring in our reference material. Uh, find it quite useful to keep it up in the corner of the screen. And then we're going to just start tracing out the rough shape. Um, this is just using the, the normal selection tool. Sometimes I do this in Illustrator, but in this particular instance, uh, I'm doing it in Photoshop. A um, bit more kind of rough and ready. Um, but I like the, the hands-on approach you can do in Photoshop where you're just, it's not too clinical. You're, you're kind of putting things out. I've completely messed this up, so I've kind of moved away from that, that area there. We'll fix it up in a minute. So we'll just stick some color in. You can see how it's not symmetrical at all. Um, not that a lot of my artwork is very symmetrical anyway, but uh, there we go. We'll just take that, give it a little adjustment. I'm working really high resolution here, so it doesn't really matter that we're scaling and stretching the, um, the assets, because I think this, this canvas is about 3,000 by 3,000 pixels. Um, good tip to always make your artwork just way bigger than you ever think you'll need it because it will turn out that you need it on some poster or print it on the side of a building. So I'm now doing a little transform on this on our bread clip. Um, don't want it to just look totally clinical and straight on. Um, so this this artwork that we're creating is not it's not what you see like lying on the ground in the game world. It's, uh, this is where it sort of pops up in, um, in a full screen view so you can really check out what you've, uh, what you've just found in a little nook or cranny somewhere. So we'll just clean this up a little tiny bit. Bit of a disco party going on, trying to choose, choose a, a good color for our clip. Um, I think this, I always sort of think of oranges and yellows for anything, anything to do with baking, that kind of golden baked um, aroma almost coming off this uh, little lump of plastic. So now using that selection tool again to trace around and add a little bit of, uh, a little bit of depth to it. 
obviously could just do this by offsetting the the main object but that wouldn't that would just look too uh, too perfect and our, our style is quite kind of I don't really like saying wonky uh, but uh, you know it's quite a um, quite a stylized perspective there we go a bit of thickness coming in as we paint that in and then with a, a slightly darker color just dotting in with all the, the shadows and then using a slightly different brush to uh, to give a little bit more um, texture don't want it to look too too vectorized and a few highlights starting to look like a real thing now a bit of clean up there we go Now we're going to add on our details, um, as you can see in our reference it's saying best buy and then a date. So we'll just get the text in, it's all hand drawn. Lots of undoing, there we go. So um, as our game set in the um, fall of 1987, we need kind of a realistic date for this bread to be best eaten by. So I think probably October is going to be, seems like a, a good month to uh, for, our, for our bread to, to go stale. 1987. That kind of works. There we go. <clears throat> I think we'll probably move all of this stuff around, find somewhere for it to sit better. Not really that happy with it up there. That's kind of looking better. We'll add in some some numbers here. I don't really know what any of these numbers mean on the on the clip. Maybe it's like the universal co code for whole meal or something. Frame that up. Now, we're going to take a little bit of artistic license, because I think if you saw one of these bread clips in the real world, you'd know it instantly it's a bread clip. But if you find it in a video game, you're not necessarily, you know, you're not actually holding it in your hand and turning it over and, and feeling the plastic and having the sort of memories maybe of, of what this thing is. Um, so we just going to add on a logo, um, which is kind of more than I've ever seen on a bread clip, but uh, it'll just help, help players know, oh, yeah, this is a loaf of bread. I've been trying some sort of ideas to, to put um, a knife concealed in the bread. I quite, quite like the sort of strange imagery of that, but uh, it didn't really work. So we're, um, I've, I've plumped for, for more of a, 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 what do you say, a, a corn logo on there. And then just adjusting the thickness a little bit, bring it in. Don't want it to look too thick looks too thick it starts to look I was a bit worried it looks a bit like the Arc de Triomphe in uh, Paris so just thin that out a little bit now we're switching to another brush this is to add a bit more a bit of texture on there everything in uh, in Nights and Bikes has got a lot of hand painted noise and texture so just picking the right um, went for an overlay layer and then we're just painting that on filling it in and Really bringing out the, the golden tones in it and do the same with the uh, with that other layer to get it on the on the edging as well and I think that's uh, that's bringing it out nicely a little bit of dirt this is a, a clip that's been sitting in uh, a few puddles through its life hopefully uh, that was after the bread was consumed And then using a different brush again, just adding in the highlights. Just softens up the edges as well. Gives it a little more of a hand hand drawn silhouette. I'm doing all this on a, a Wacom. Uh, in an ideal world, you know, I'd have 
a Cintiq to be gliding around on, but uh, we're, uh, we're ke keeping things uh, a little uh, smaller at the moment. Let's see how this Kickstarter goes. So that's uh, looking pretty three-dimensional now, even though it's fairly two-dimensional. Uh, I think we'll, we'll do something a little more um, uh, detailed for our next loop jam. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty pretty happy with how that's looking. So we're just going to now compare that. Um, I think it's always good to compare it with the other items that you're making. So we'll just move that over. Check out. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, that's looking pretty good compared to an owl pellet. Uh, quite quite different things. Although, I'm not quite sure about this this piece up in the top corner. I'm not really happy with that. Mm. I'm just going to quickly go in and, and give that a tweak because um, I've got all my layers. Yeah, that's looking better. Yeah, happier with that now. And now that's ready to export and take into the game. And we'll be able to add it into one of our loot chests or little kind of tin can time machines that Demelza and Nessa are digging up and finding on the Isle of Penfersey as they go around. So thanks for watching. Um, I think we'll, we'll be doing some more of these because there are just so much loot that I want to draw now based on all your ideas. So. Uh, Hopefully see you in the next one. Thank you.